It's not a stretch to say that Microsoft's Windows is one of the most ubiquitous and well-known pieces of software the world has ever seen. At one point or another, you've almost certainly spent some time with one of the many iconic Windows releases. And today is the 35th birthday of the one that started it all. Windows 1.0 was released on November 20th, 1985. Though chances are most of you don't have fond memories of it, if you have memories of it at all. It was received poorly by critics, in part because Windows 1.0 wasn't really an operating system at all. It was more of a GUI tacked on top of MS-DOS. Given that MS-DOS was so keyboard focused, Windows and its mouse based UI felt like a poor match. If Windows 1.0 wasn't quite ready for prime time, Microsoft had caught up by April 1992 when it released Windows 3.1. While 3.0 arrived in May of 1990, Windows 3.1 was far more stable and added improvements to the 3.0 GUI, which itself was a huge step forward from Windows 1.0. Windows 3.1 was also the first version to support the TrueType font system, which gave application developers access to a set of scalable fonts when developing their software. Perhaps most importantly though, it was the first version of Windows that came with Minesweeper, the most important Windows software feature after Solitaire. Windows grew in popularity and capability throughout the early 90s, but the arrival of Windows 95 in August of 1995 was an event unlike anything in the history of computing. Microsoft paid the Rolling Stones to use their song Start Me Up in a commercial, the first time the band licensed their music for an ad. And Microsoft also made a promotional video starring Matthew Perry and Jennifer Aniston from Friends to hype up Windows 95. Bars and email and shortcuts, oh my. People lined up in the street to get a copy of an operating system, something unheard of back then. In a lot of ways, this was a precursor to the iPhone hype that started a decade later. Before people were lining up for iPhones, they lined up for Windows 95. Fortunately, Windows 95 had enough improvements to justify this hype. Microsoft introduced the now ubiquitous start menu and a redesigned UI that has served as the foundation for basically every subsequent Windows release. It was also the first consumer version of Windows to be a true operating system rather than just a GUI built on top of MS-DOS. And future updates added Internet Explorer, another of Microsoft's most infamous pieces of software. Windows 98 and ME built on top of what Microsoft started with Windows 95 with varying levels of success. While Windows 98 was a worthy successor, Windows ME was derided as perhaps the worst, most buggy version of the OS Microsoft ever released. By October of 2001, Microsoft was ready to move on with Windows XP, the first consumer version of Windows to be based on the NT kernel that the company developed in the 90s to run servers and workstations. XP was another huge success for Microsoft, with major UI updates, including the first major change to the start menu, and significantly improved stability compared to ME. After 16 years, it was also the first version of Windows not based on MS-DOS. XP was easily one of the most successful versions of Windows ever. Microsoft offered extended support for XP until 2014, more than 12 years after its initial release. Windows Vista and Windows 7 followed in November of 2006 and July of 2009, respectively. Vista was largely panned upon release for its area UI, high system requirements, and bugginess. While it wasn't as bad as ME, Vista's reputation was such that computer makers like Dell and Lenovo sold their computers with the option of installing Windows XP instead of Vista. Windows 7 was a course correction that was met with positive reviews and huge sales. 100 million copies were sold in the first six months of availability. The most significant change in 2012's Windows 8 was its new Metro design. The tile-heavy interface the company used for its Windows phone made its way to your computer. It was an effort by Microsoft to unify its interfaces across mobile and desktop while also making a big bet on tablet computing. Windows 8 came out at the same time as Microsoft's first service devices. But this redesign put the familiar desktop in the background, a move that was widely panned. The tile interface worked well with touch, but the millions of people who used Windows 8 with a keyboard or mouse were generally left cold, and the removal of the start button and traditional taskbar similarly went too far for a lot of people. Much like Windows 7, Windows 10, which launched in September of 2014, was a course correction after a tough few years. It balanced what Windows 8 did well with the more traditional and mature Microsoft desktop. Unsurprisingly, it was another major seller. Microsoft said it had 1 billion active users earlier this year. Microsoft has been iterating and updating Windows 10 at a fairly rapid pace since it launched. Rather than its strategy of major updates and releases every few years, the pace of innovation and change is more steady and gradual now. As such, the days of people lining up outside a store for a new Windows version are long behind us, but further innovations and updates are something Microsoft fans will always keep an eye out for. As always, please subscribe to see more, and stay tuned to Engadget for more news.